An Artist of the Floating World by Kazuo Shiguro, November 1949. Masuji Ono recalls the first time he met Dr. Sato, some 16 years ago. The days after Ono has moved into his new home, Dr. Sato told him what an honor it was to have an artist of his caliber as a neighbor. Ono is confident in his precise recollection of the meeting. Setsuko and Ichiro are visiting again, this time staying with Noriko and her new husband Tero Sato. Ono meets them for a walk in Kawabe Park, designed by Akira Sugimura, who intended for it to house a museum, theater, and other cultural destinations, a dream that never came to fruition, costing him much of his personal fortune and status. Ono reflects on the ambition to leave a mark. Even if such an ambition fails, those who held it have done more than those who never tried. Ono recalls his days as a student of Mori-san, as he and the other artists who lived at the villa called him. Mori, San liked to stand back from his work and listen as his students debated its meaning. He was evolving the traditional Japanese style to reflect Western influences, and his students copied his style. Artwork perceived as contrary to Morisans, and was labeled disloyal and destroyed. Ono heard the pleadings of Sasaki, an artist judged disloyal, one evening, but the other artists shunned him, and he had no choice but to leave. They called him the traitor. Life at the villa was filled with late nights in the pleasure district, and parties at the villa. One night Ono expressed his concern to Mori, San about this self, indulgence. But Mori, San insisted it enabled artists to capture the transient beauty of the floating world, of nighttime revels awash in flickering lantern light. Ono enjoys a visit with Ichiro and promises the boy that he will let him taste. Sake, Japanese rice wine, that night. Ichiro asks his grandfather about Yukio Noguchi, a composer who died by suicide. Ono explains that the composer made music that encouraged many young men to fight in the war but later felt it had been a mistake and killed himself as an apology for his deeds. Ono says this was brave and honorable. That night Setsuko and Noriko reject Ono's plan to allow Ichiro to taste sake. Ono complains that they don't understand the importance of male pride. Taro mentions a colleague they call the tortoise, and Ono recalls the day the tortoise saw a new painting Ono was creating. It was a new style, and it shocked the tortoise, who took one look and called Ono a traitor. The painting had been inspired by a trip to the slums with Matsuda. Ono had seen three little boys armed with sticks, dressed in rags, glaring at him, likely caught in the act of torturing an animal. The painting, called Complacency, contrasted the three boys with fat, laughing businessmen at a bar, underscored by the words, the young are ready to fight for their dignity. The painting became the basis for Ono's most famous work, titled Eyes on the Horizon, a print of which was widely circulated. In it the boys are soldiers, and the businessmen well-known politicians, all framed in the outline of Japan. Behind the soldiers is the rising sun, and underneath are the words, Japan, must go forward. Matsuda advocated Japanese expansionism. When Ono's paintings went missing, Mori-san admitted taking the work. He was surprised by Ono's new style, and politely asked Ono to hand over all his other paintings. Ono refused, and he was shunned by the other artists and forced to leave. He recalls a later visit to Koda's home, the smell of smoke in the air. A plainclothes police officer answered the door and said Koda had been taken into custody. The house was ransacked, and Ono was shocked to find a pile of paintings burning. As the advisor to the Committee on Unpatriotic Activities, Ono had expected the police merely to speak sternly to Koda. He objected that they took things too far. The police dismissed Ono's concerns and had him leave. 